Every country is different. Every culture is unique. That's why traveling is so fun. Can't travel? Well, don't worry. We've got the next best thing, a video. So let's pick a country and talk about it. These are 20 things that can't be seen anywhere but in Japan. Number 20. Gundam Robot Found in Japan Likely as not, you're aware that Japan loves anime. Well, actually, they really love anime. It's a serious business there, and this robot is evidence of just how seriously they take the stuff in Japan. Gundam is a Japanese anime franchise which features giant robots, which are also known as Mecha, and are named Gundam. It began as a series all the way back in 1979 with the show Mobile Suit Gundam that changed the face of robot anime for good. So, this is a cult image in Japan, and it shouldn't surprise fans of the genre that some people decided to go ahead and fashion a real Gundam robot in the style of the anime series. And it's built to scale, which means that it's absolutely massive. Created by Japanese engineers, the Gundam Giant Robot measures around 59 feet tall, weighing in at a colossal 25 tons. It was built in an area that looks to all intents and purposes as though it were a NASA rocket launch facility, but it's actually a robot building bay. The robot also moves and has 24 moving joints. It is to be displayed in a series of shows which will showcase its abilities, such as levitation and walking. It's pretty cool, but also just a bit unnerving. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Unique Kit Kat Flavors Kit Kats are alright, I guess. These wafer fingers covered in chocolate are a lunchbox staple in many places. In fact, they're produced in 16 different countries around the world. But in Japan, they are so much more than just your standard chocolate bar. They don't just do regular Kit Kats in Japan. Why eat a boring old chocolate one when you can choose from no less than 300 flavors? The name Kit Kat is coincidentally similar to the Japanese Kirokatsu, which means good luck or surely win. So, the biscuit bar has been imbued with all sorts of magical or fortune dispensing properties, which may or may not be within the confection's repertoire of talents. As a result of this accidental naming, the humble Kit Kat is regularly given as a gift of good luck around exam time in Japan. The flavors that are available in Japan may leave a little bit to be desired, unless of course you're into the idea of soy sauce or green tea flavored Kit Kats, and why wouldn't you be? If you're less adventurous, there are such delights as creme brulee, ginger ale, and cherry blossom. Do they go with a good cup of builder's tea, though? Well, that's really the only question that matters. Number 18. They use blue traffic lights instead of green. Throughout most of the whole entire world, the color green means go, right? We're all fairly familiar with this as a concept, but in Japan, they thought that they would shake things up a bit and go with their own way with this old classic. In actual fact, Japan used to have green traffic lights, but back in 1973, a government mandate would change the shade of green that was required in all the nation's traffic lights. That mandate stated that the lights should all use the bluest shade of green possible, and this was the result of Japanese linguists having a bunch of issues with some semantic stuff and the way that these laws were written and the words that were used were not satisfactory to them. This is because in Japan there are different words to describe colors than there are elsewhere in the world. There used to be only four words for colors, black, white, red, and blue. Therefore, if you wanted to describe something that was green, you just use the blue word ao. However, the word Midori was introduced at some point, and the word actually means sprout, but began being used to describe things that were green in color. Although this happened a really long time ago, there's a bit of hangover for using the word AO in respect to some stuff that has a particular green hue, hence the semantic situation. So yes, traffic lights in Japan, although officially green, actually look blue so that they can use that ambiguous word AO to describe them. I 
know it's confusing, but that's often how things are in Japan and basically in my entire life. Number 17. Vending machine that sell everything people can imagine. Japan has different ideas about vending machines. To you and I, a vending machine is a convenient place to purchase a drink or a snack, or occasionally an uh, <clears throat> adult accessory perhaps. But in Japan, they've taken the possibilities of these convenient dispensers to entirely new levels, and it gets pretty weird. There are approximately 3.2 million vending machines cluttering up the streets and alleyways of Japanese towns and cities. That's one machine for every 36 people in the country. This amounts to an annual sales of about $6.4 billion dollars, which works out at $60 per person. That's a whole lot of posting pennies in the slots. Now, the excessive use of vending machines is not without its risks. There are actually many reports of wobbly dispensers toppling over and squashing people, and this has proven fatal in at least two cases, as well as the standard boiling water mishap and, of course, the perennial stuck purchase problem. But what Japan has achieved is the expansion of the possibilities of this particular consumer delivery system. There are machines selling the usual foodstuffs, and then some that sell next-level edible items like noodles, rice, hamburgers, bananas, and even milk. Beyond that, there are some which contain liquor, others that have golf balls, clothing, umbrellas, batteries, fortunes, flowers, oh, and of course, pornography. All of the essentials, really. Number 16. Public transportation that is extremely efficient. The Japanese railway system is famous all over the world for being incredibly efficient and extremely fast. And this is no exaggeration, the trains are not the only transportation that's well run in Japan. Basically, everything is efficient, clean, and a source of pride. But that rail network really hits it out of the park. In Japan, an emphasis is definitely placed on timekeeping skills. It's just that it's taken extremely seriously in all aspects of Japanese life. Being late? Well, that's simply not acceptable. It's a sign of disrespect if you're late. And Japanese people, they value what others would think or feel because of their actions. Revolutionary stuff, at least for many of the Western nations where it can often feel as though the clock is just a suggestion and other people's feelings are merely an inconvenience. However, in Japan, people will take great planes to be punctual and never make excuses if they're late. They're humble and they accept responsibility. Back in 2018, a train departed 25 seconds earlier than its scheduled time, and it was one of the most humiliating moments in the history of the Japanese railway. They made a statement that this was truly inexcusable. Just imagine if a train in the United States or even the UK did that. People would likely faint out of shock. Number 15. Display food. This is a rather uniquely Japanese thing that you might be surprised to see if you happen to be fortunate enough to visit the country. In many restaurants, they'll actually display plastic versions of the foods that they have on offer. Although this might seem kind of weird, especially if you come from a country where photographs of the food available on show in a restaurant will most likely give you an impression that the establishment is less than fancy, but in Japan, there's a competitive aspect to the practice. In fact, these plastic foods are are really, really realistic, and presenting the most real-looking meal replicas can actually affect just how successful a restaurant might be. There is an enormous competition amongst Japanese restaurants, and that's how these replica dinners first came into being. Way back in 1917, a manufacturer of wax anatomical models began producing these sample models for local restaurants around his hometown of Kyoto. These displayed in their windows and then began to draw attention from customers and other restaurateurs alike. Soon, everyone wanted similar models for their restaurant windows and the phenomenon grew. The first plastic versions were created in 1932 and they have only continued to become more and more authentically food-like in appearance. But what do you think? Do these pretend dinners actually make you hungry? Number 14. Toilets with a Smart Washlet 
The fancy toilets in Japan are pretty famous all around the world. High-tech toilets have been commonplace in Japan for many years and are now more frequently found than boring old traditional toilets. With a whole bunch of buttons and snazzy features, super toilets are much more than just a receptacle for bodily waste. These things provide more services than a luxury car wash. Even the basic models do offer the sitter a range of such wondrous delights as anal cleansing, bidet washing, deodorant and the utterly essential seat warming. How the world has survived without such basics is a mystery to me. I mean, we've all been living like animals, and it's time that we stopped parking our posteriors all willy-nilly without a proper bottom washing facility, let alone on a chilly old chamber pot. The sheer number of buttons and options are likely to boggle the basic brain, so before you engage with a tech toilet, make sure you clear your schedule or you'll simply not have time to explore all the wonders of multiple flush options, which are based on the specific type of deposit that you've made. Or how about the integrated bidet selections, with the inspiringly titled choices of oscillating, pulsing, and rear soft functions? You'll wonder how you ever lived without it. Number 13. Japan has made and butler cafes. Nothing to see here. There's definitely nothing weird or even remotely creepy about lots of young Japanese women dressed in maid outfits, serving lots of businessmen and tourists in cafes. Oh no, this is definitely not some sort of fetish thing. No, not at all. Maid cafes began appearing back in 2001 in the area of Tokyo, known as Akihabara, the main place in the city for pop culture and fans of electronics. These coffee shops are also known as Midukisa, the waitresses in these establishments basically dress in so-called cute French maid outfits. Apparently part of the Japanese obsession with all things kawaii. This one has some distinct sexual undertones though. I mean, who am I kidding? This is entirely about that. The notion that attractive young women dress up as French maids and serve people things would be anything but sexual. Well, that's naive. But there you go. These waitresses also add cuteness to the whole experience of visiting the cafe. They'll draw something on your food, hang out with you and chat, and do performances. Oh, and it's more expensive than a standard cafe on the account of them having a more involved sort of role. So yes, the servers also call the customer master and they're considered servants of them. Well, okay then. Number 12. Japan has unique ice cream flavors. Let me ask you this. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Are you a purist for whom vanilla can't be beaten? Or do you like to mix it up at the parlor with an array of multicolored delights? Well, in Japan, as usual, they've taken a huge array of ice cream flavors and then added their own unique twist into the mix. Here are some of the more original flavors from the Japanese ice cream selection that you may like to try or not. How about squid ink ice cream? Yes, straight out of the gate, we have a seafood themed flavor. And don't worry, there will be more. This one looks kind of cool in a Halloween-y sort of way, but could you actually bring yourself to try it? Or perhaps that wasabi flavor. Get that eye-watering, burning nose sensation from your favorite dessert. Such fun! Then there's the distinctly Japanese flavor natto, which is fermented soybean, a famously unpalatable snot textured dish that has Westerners of all kinds completely grossed out. The Japanese really do favor a savory ice cream, which is, in and of itself, kind of bizarre to Western sugar-addled palates. Other flavors you may find in Japan include octopus, chicken wing, raw horse meat, seaweed, miso, snake, and beef tongue. Right then, which one would you like to try? None of the above? Really? Well, that's interesting. I could sit here all day and bang on about how revolting these ice cream flavors sound, but can we all just agree that these are not to everyone's tastes and go ahead and enjoy our own raspberry ripple waffle cone without any further judgment. Number 11. Japan's Crazy Silent Karaoke 
The craze for karaoke is really very strong in Japan. It's not just a stereotype though, people are really seriously into it. So much so that they're seeking ways to enjoy the pull of the microphone even when they can't get to an official karaoke premises. One such time when the fans of this sing-along couldn't get to their regular fix was during the events of 2020. You know the ones because you were all there hopefully. And with people being cooped up in their homes, they couldn't get to doing all of that singing without upsetting all of their neighbors. And in Japanese cities, people live very close to their neighbors in very tiny apartments. And so this became a genuine problem. That was until the invention of a so-called silent karaoke, designed for exactly this conundrum. The silent karaoke machine involves a pair of headphones and an unusual shaped microphone, which is placed over the entire entire mouth area. It's not exactly what I would call silent, but it does make the singer sound muffled in a way that's reminiscent of a hostage wearing a gag. Number 10. Futuristic Capsule Hotels now, if you've ever wondered what it might be like to wake up in a morgue, then the capsule hotel might be the experience you've been waiting for. In the ever-shrinking spaces of the Japanese city, the capsule hotel has taken limited size to the extremes of what may be tolerable. Of course, sleeping in a 7 feet by 3 feet by 4 feet cubicle, well that's ever so slightly bigger than sleeping in a coffin, but only just slightly. And when the average hotel room in Tokyo can set you back a hefty $200 a night, the $25 price tag for sleeping Sleeping in a weird corridor of cupboards, well, that might help soften the coffin vibes just a teeny little bit. Number 9. Free Tissues Handed Out on the Street in Japan, instead of receiving a flyer that advertises a place or an event, many companies actually use tissues as a way to get their message out there to the public. It's actually a practice that's been commonplace in Japan for the last 40 years or so. Japanese businesses will put their colorful advertisement in a small sachet along with a folded pocket tissue. <laughs> This has been proven to be a fairly effective method of advertising for these businesses. Most of the advertisements tend to be for loans and consumer credit companies, and they'll often add a coupon for a free drink and tissue discount vouchers as well. There is evidence that the familiarity of these brands, which has been achieved through this method, has been fairly profitable and that consumers will often choose them because they recognize them. It certainly does help that the tissue is a useful item that people will often keep in a bag or a pocket for a while and therefore become really well known to many people. Plus, you just never know when a tissue might actually come in handy. Number 8. Stunning Rice Paddy Art Back in 1993, a village in rural northern Japan began the process of revitalizing the culture of the place through creating rice paddy art. Japan does suffer hugely from the migration of its people from rural areas to live and work in the cities, and many of its more isolated rural communities have lost much of their population and have begun to deteriorate, with the culture and history of those areas also beginning to disappear. So, the idea to reinvigorate this part of the country was really important. Each May, a group of around 1,300 volunteers get together to plant rice in the paddies, except this is no regular rice planting. They actually use many different varieties and plant them in intricate designs. Then by the time the rice is growing and summertime comes along, the planting is then in full bloom. The extraordinary creations are a hugely popular tourist attraction, and thousands of people will turn up to see the designs. These creations have gradually become more and more elaborate as time has gone on, and they now regularly produce such intricate and detailed designs as homages to movies like Star Wars and Gone with the Wind, as well as many traditional Japanese designs and creatures from mythology. Number 7. Automatic Taxi Doors Wherever you go in the world, each place is going to have a bunch of its own quirks and nuances, and one of Japan's such oddities is that of the doors of their taxis will apparently open automatically when the taxi pulls up to collect a customer. This might seem like a cute and kind of futuristic sort of thing, but it seems as if it's been going on in Japan in one way or another since back to the 1950s. A taxi company from Osaka called Osaka Tanbo Taxi is credited with inventing the automatic door system. 
The story apparently goes that forgetful customers would get into the cab and then not close the door behind them. This became such an issue, if you can believe it, that taxi drivers were forced to reach through from the front seat all the time in order to close the rear doors for these dopey customers. Eventually, they had had enough of this nonsense because cars were getting bigger and their arms certainly weren't getting any longer and something had to be done. The solution? Automatic taxi doors. And these things really caught on. These doors are now considered part of the Japanese hospitality industry and are seen widely throughout the country. Number 6. Drinking in public is A-OK -okay. In the United States, even when the purchase of adult beverages should be concealed in a paper bag, lest the neighbors see that the fishers at number 15 have botched three bottles of bourbon already this week, and other social embarrassments, boozing in public is absolutely not allowed, except in properly allocated locations, and even then it's often done under a spotlight of shame from all the judgy general public. However, not so in Japan. In fact, it's not uncommon to see a fully grown own, usually sensible human, stagger along a street in a manner befitting a bachelor party at 3 in the morning, and for the most part, nobody in Japan would even bat an eyelid. While advocating for full-on public drunkenness is not really the goal, it has to be said that Japan has fairly relaxed laws when it comes to alcohol. It is not, for example, illegal to be intoxicated in public. So people may indeed appear quite sizzled in the street, and they wouldn't get into trouble for it, unless of course they're also disorderly. That is definitely frowned upon, and well, illegal actually. So things like fiddling, getting naked, and trespassing are absolutely not allowed, but being three sheets to the wind is absolutely fine. Oh, and it's also quite alright to have an open container in public. Yes, you may booze it up in the street, or the park, or wherever, as long as it's a public space and not a private one like a store or something. In fact, you can also drink on public transportation and in private transportation as long as you're not driving. The drink and drive laws are extremely strict, and the limit is effectively zero, so don't do that. However, in the street, you can go for it, and you can completely get wellied, and it isn't an issue. Except for if you get lost, of course. Number 5. Free foot baths to warm your feet. All over Japan, you're going to find public hot springs known as onsen. These baths are generally for the whole body and are an important part of the Japanese culture. But did you know that they also have a lot of free hot foot baths all over the place? These unusual features are known as a shiyu and can often be found in public places in Japan. They'll also be located near hot springs, well, for obvious reasons, but may be available to the public to enjoy, often free of charge, as a way to relax and enjoy the setting around you. These are very popular amongst Japanese tourists who like the benefits of the onset without having to fully immerse themselves in the water. And it's also a convenient alternative for those with blood pressure issues since full thermal baths are not recommended. But how would you feel about dipping your feet in a shared hot bath? Do you fancy dangling your appendages into a stew of old people foot juices? Sounds kind of like a fun one, really. Let's have a chat about it in the comments down below, shall we? Number 4. Japanese Luxury Fruit I do love watermelon, but I've often pondered, as I'm sure that you have as well, just why these fruits only come in boring old round shapes. Surely it's time to make fruit more fun, why not make it into more exciting shapes for beginners? Well, obviously Japan is already ahead of the game in the fruit format revolution, and they're taking it very seriously indeed. In fact, fruit in general is a serious business in Japan. There's a grading system that means that the very highest quality, most perfectly formed specimens of fruit can demand extraordinarily high prices and are often given as special gifts that represent a deeply meaningful and respectful gesture. So, taking this reverence for the fruity to the next level, Japan's farmers have come up with a way to produce square watermelons, as well as other pretty shapes like hearts and triangles. Now, originally, the idea behind the square watermelon was to make the awkward fruit more manageable, you know, so it would fit in the fridge better and be cut into neater pieces. However, as the appeal of the shape became apparent, those with a passion for fruit fiddling found ever more fancy ways to tidy up the fruit basket. 
These days, a perfectly formed square watermelon, well, that can set you back as much as $160. Seems like there are some wallets that are just ripe for the picking. Number three, no trash cans. Japanese culture has many distinct traditions and rituals. A large number of them are bound up in the importance of respect and cultural values. As a nation, Japan is famous for its very clean streets and public spaces. The pride and responsibility of this cultural habit is created in schools through the practice of osoji, which means cleaning. So Japanese people, while they have enormous built-in respect for keeping things clean and tidy, unlike much of the rest of the world, it would seem, Anyways, this is something that often puzzles foreign visitors when they first visit Japan. There's no litter, and everything is clean, and yet there are also no trash cans to be found on the street. Well, it seems that the rules and manners regarding cleanliness mean that people will simply hang on to any rubbish they may have until they've either gotten home or find a suitable place to dispose of it. There are, of course, waste bins in many places, but they're not liberally scattered throughout the streets. Number 2. Inamuri, the Japanese art of sleeping at work. Work culture in Japan is pretty extreme. It's a nation for whom overworking oneself to the point of exhaustion becomes a badge of honor. In fact, it's pretty much expected from many workers. That level of dedication to the job can often have some side effects, though. A major side effect of this work obsession is that people are really, really tired. Japan is the most sleep-deprived country on Earth. The average time that a Japanese person sleeps at night is about 6 hours and 35 minutes. They'll also spend a long time commuting to and from work and habitually spend long days in the office, working many extra hours in order to prove themselves. This means that people often fall asleep in strange places. In fact, people literally fall asleep on the job. But rather than this being frowned upon like in many other places, this is simply accepted as an indication that the person has been working very hard, likely because they have. Japanese people fall asleep in all manner of places, from the office to the shopping mall, to the park and even on the train, and they'll do it so often, there's a specific word for it, in a muri, which means to be present while asleep. Number 1. Name Plates on Houses in Japan, it's common to see nameplates on the fronts of houses which display the family name of those who live there. While this is not how it's done in most of the world, it is a pretty regular thing in Japanese cities and villages. The practice first really began as the result of a terrible disaster in 1923 when a huge earthquake followed by a tsunami and many fires would kill more than 140,000 people. The difficulty that people had in identifying the dead brought about the change toward using these names nameplates as a standard thing. Another reason that nameplates are kind of helpful is that unlike in the Western world, Japan doesn't use street names to differentiate between places. Oh no, they use a system of numbering the blocks and leaving streets nameless. What this basically amounts to is that in order to locate somewhere, you're going to need to know what block it's on rather than what street it's on, and it can all be rather confusing indeed. But they just do things differently there, and who the heck are we to even judge? Thanks for sticking with us on our bewildered stroll throughout some of Japanese culture's more unique features. Which of these things had your head scratching the most? And would you try any of those crazy ice cream flavors? As always, be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.